Pregame.com. I'm Vegas Runner, here with Brian Leonard, going to talk some Sunday hoops. We usually reserve for NBA we break down on Sundays, but not this week. NBA All-Star Game in effect, so we're going to do some Big East action. Cincinnati at South Florida. We made the line South Florida minus one and a half. I got to gotta take the home team here. I, I know I've been on the favorites in these videos today, but... Uh, I just think this is a much better team, and I don't believe they've gotten the respect they deserve. Um, when you look at the Big East, South Florida has never been mentioned. I mean, even though the, the Big East is down this year, South Florida is never a team going into the season that anyone's projecting to be ahead of Georgetown, Syracuse, even Villanova. Um, but here they are. They're more or less in third place, 10 foreign conference, 17 and 10 overall. And when you compare them to Cincinnati, who's below them in conference at 9-5, and five, Cincinnati, on paper, appears record-wise to be the better team. They're 19-8. and eight. But a quick glance at their strength of schedule is the most telling story to me. You look at South Florida, the 24th toughest schedule in college basketball. 91st non-conference schedule. You look at Cincinnati, 119th toughest strength of schedule non-conference 339th so they haven't played anybody to build that 19 and 8 record now here they are playing south florida last year these two teams met in the big east tournament at madison square garden south florida got sent home losing by 26 points they got revenge on the mind in this one baby i gotta take the home team See, I look at it a little bit different than you do, and my numbers are slightly different what yours are. I, I'm not enamored with Cincinnati. I just don't think they're that great this year. Um, decent fighting team, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, they could brawl. <laughs> they could brawl. <laughs> yeah, you know. yeah. They actually came out of the brawl a whole lot better than yeah, Xavier than Xavier did. I thought did. Xavier was a bet on team going into that brawl. Man, they knocked them silly, but you take a look at South Florida. I've got them at 17-11 on the season, 10-5 and in the biggest. But, you know, normally when you, when you take a look at the Big East, all you got to do is put up a 500 record, you get an invite to the Big Dance. Yeah. They're 10-5 and 5 in the Big East, but just 17-11 and 11 overall. And in their 10-5 and 5 record in the Big East, they're only outscoring the conference opponents by 1.6 points per game. You know, they talk about flipping the coins. and a lot Being of on the right coming, side of the coin toss. Coming up on the right side of the coin toss. Uh, five of their last six games uh, decided by single digits. They won those games. In this price range we're looking at right here, one, one and a half in that general range, that'd probably be a good thing for South Florida. But I'm, I'm not even sure this is a dance-worthy team. I mean, their RPI, they're number 50 right now. But when you take a look at, at the games they've been winning, I think they've been a little bit fortunate. I'm, right, not, I'm right. not really sure this is a team that deserves to be on, in the big dance, but you take a look at the record, hey, 10 and 5 in the Big East, you've got to invite them. It would not surprise me. And I might be in the minority. It would not surprise me if either one of these teams even make the tournament this year. Really? You think they need to have a nice run in I, the conference tournament? I think whoever loses this game, especially with Cincinnati, I don't think they make the big dance. Yeah, this is a big game. I mean, yeah. you, you look at this one, and they're one game uh, you know, within the, uh, each other in the conference. So this is a huge game for both of these teams. I just think matchup-wise, South Florida is too big for them. you know, And, and playing at home... I just not sure that Cincinnati could overcome that height difference. And it's surprising. Cincinnati, I remember them with Huggins as a team that always had size. You yeah. know, they were a big team, and that was their biggest asset. Looking at them this year, that's their biggest liability. And I think going up against a, a team with, like South Florida that does have size, I just think that's, that's too much to ask for, especially when you're 217th in field goal percentage offensively that's what cincinnati shoots so i just i i don't see them getting it done here on the road i think there's a lot of revenge in store for this game i think this is a much bigger game for south florida although like you said i agree 100 percent. cincinnati knows they got to win these kind of game if they want to go right. dancing but i think for south florida if they are deserving of you know making the dance this is a game they got to win and personally i think they're capable 
I have some concerns about South Florida. One is they're a very slow-paced team, yeah, yet yeah. they don't take care of the ball. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? I mean, normally you don't find that situation. Most of the teams who turn the ball over a lot are teams that are going up and down the court. And they're not deep. They're not a deep no, team. No, not a deep team. And, Seven and they don't, guys get minutes, they, tops. They don't shoot the three very well. So you've got a team who doesn't take care of the ball. They don't get a lot of fast break points because of the style of play, and they don't shoot the threes very well. On the other hand, Cincinnati, they're not very good going inside, and that's the strength of South Florida. They're very good defensively inside. So I'm not back in Cincinnati. I'm not back in South Florida. What I like in this game is a low-scoring game because I don't see a lot of offense here. Neither team really shoots the ball that well. South Florida's defense is a little bit better than Cincinnati's, but the pace is going to be slow, and we already talked about the importance of the game. When you have a game that's a must-win game, I think it, especially for Cincinnati, this is a must-win game. You're going to take care of the ball a little bit better. You're not going to go out and try and try to do anything fancy. I think it's going to be a slow-paced game, according to the numbers. It's what it should be. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I kind of like the under. I agree. I made my total 118, and what I've noticed is just like with baseball totals, there's only so low they'll go. You know what I mean? Even though a game is handicapped at five runs, you're, they're not going to put the game out at five. I mean, just over the last two, three years, are we even seeing six and a halves and six? Prior to this decade, nothing was ever below a seven. Regardless of, of what Cy Young pitchers were meeting each other, the total is going to be seven. I think in college basketball, that's what happens when games should be below 110 or below 120. And instead, books aren't going to go that low. You know, they know they'll get flooded with one-sided action on the over. They're going to get over money anyway if they put it up at 122. So why let the public have the best of it? Instead, make them go over the worst of it. And I think you can get a lot of value by being willing to go under a game that's 120, 119, 118. Yeah. So I agree with you. Maybe that's the play here. I like South Florida. He likes Cincy. And he's been hotter than I have been in college basketball right now. So we both agree on the under. We're going to go ahead and, and stamp the under and see who is right on the side. To do it for this week's videos, don't forget pregamevideos.com. All the videos in one thread with conversation and notes. It's going to do it for this week. Enjoy the All Star break. Those of you NBA players not playing, enjoy your golf vacations. We'll be back next week.